Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to show you five features of Google Scholar the students should know how to use. Let's go ahead and take a look at Google Scholar here. And let's say I'm going to do a search for information about digital portfolios in education, something I was actually researching not that long ago. And the first thing that students should know is how to identify the access level for the articles, because not every article in Google Scholar is available to read for free in its entirety. For example, if we click on this first one and open it in a new tab, we'll see that we can read it a little abstract of it, but we can't actually read the entire article for free. We'll see if we click on the get access here, it wants us to pay $45 to download that article and we only get it for 48 hours. So a quick little tip for students is to look for things on the right hand side that have a PDF label next to them because those are things that they'll be able to access in their entirety for free. For example here, let's take a look at developing digital portfolios for childhood education research reports. Let's just do a quick right click on that one. And we'll see that opens up the entire 289 page PDF that we can then read through. And a quick little tip, students should also know to use control F to search within the PDF itself for any keywords they might want to identify like digital. In this case, there's 574 references to the word digital within this 289 page PDF. So that's the first thing you need to know is how to quickly identify the access level. Now, next little feature, let's say that they have accessed this PDF and they've found it really useful and they're going to use it in their research report. Well, they wanna cite the work. So click on the little cite button and they'll quickly find citation information and MLA, APA, Chicago, Harvard, Vancouver style. And you can see down here some quick links to additional tools like RefWorks and BibTeX. Now, if my students are doing some research and they find this is useful, but they wanna come back to it later, well, guess what? They can star it and save it right in their libraries of interesting works from Google Scholar that they have saved. Now, of course, they could also have just bookmarked this using Google Keep or OneNote or whatever their favorite bookmarking tool is. But here, they get to save it right in their library by again, just clicking on that little star. Now, while we're still down here, let's take a look at this cited by and related articles. So if we click on cited by, this will take students to a list of all the other works in Google Scholar that cited the one that I am using. So I've just looked at this one and I saved it. I'm going to cite it in my research. I wanna see who else is citing it in their work. Well, I just clicked on that cited by 42 others. And there's that list of all of the other articles that reference the work that I'm also referencing. And once again, we see a bunch of PDFs. We can just right click on that, open that up in a new tab and look at that PDF. In this case, a 24 page PDF. Now, we also have this option here for related articles that students should never overlook. And we'll see a long list there of related articles. Now, in this case, my results are in Norwegian, so let's make sure we translate it into English. And finally, the fifth thing that students should know about in Google Scholar is the option to refine their search according to date. You can see the default options here of since 2021, since 2020, and 2017. But let's do a custom range. If we click on custom range, we can say, I want things that were just published between the years of 2010 and 2021. I don't want anything older than 2010. And so let's now refine our search. 
And there we have it. So those are five features of Google Scholar that students should know how to use. As always, for more tips and tricks like this, please check out freetechforteachers.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel.